Hi, I'm Kristen Rosenberg from Orlando, Florida, and in this free art lesson, I'm going to show you how to prepare your tools for Japanese inkbrush painting, also known as sumie. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is soak your brushes. When brushes first come, they are starched to a point to protect the bristles. What you're going to want to do is take your brushes, hold them under running water, warm, and then you're going to fork the bristles apart gently to loosen them up, work the water into the center, then you're going to get your basin, fill it with warm water, and soak them for at least four hours. The larger brushes take longer and the smaller brushes take usually under an hour. Then what you're going to want to do is season your stone. Now when an ink stone first comes, it's very clean and beautiful, but what you really want is this nice, dirty, gunky stuff in here. This is going to give me a nice tone when I'm painting. Every time you grind a stone, it improves the quality of your ink. So, you're going to add water with your brush into the ink well. And you're going to hold it like so. You can use either side and you're going to grind. Now, after you get this whole inkwell nice and full, you'll be ready to paint. Don't wash it out. Never wash your inkstone out. If it looks pretty and nice like this, it's new, it's great, that's wonderful that it's nice and beautiful and clean, but you're going to have to grind your stone over and over and over, and you're erasing all that wonderful quality that you wanted. You want it nice and dirty, the dirtier the better. Unfortunately, ink stains very badly. So don't get it on your clothes or on anything you want. Like So I usually wear black, and I always cover my tables in black so that I don't even have to worry about wearing an apron, that kind of thing. When you are painting, watch your sleeves and your hands because you'll accidentally smudge your paintings. And while you can usually cover up a little bit of a dip or a dab or a splatter, a fingerprint, that kind of usually gives away that that was an oops. All right, another wonderful pigment that also happens to stain quite badly is honko paste. Now honko paste, when you first get it, it's kind of stiff. You're going to want to lift it, kind of whip it up a bit, soften it. Then after it's nice and soft, you're going to take your honko and it's pretty violent. You dab it in there as hard as you can, work it into all the little crevices. And then you're going to make sure that your honko is straight the direction that you want it. You're going to press very hard, roll it, don't smear it at all, and then lift up. And hopefully it comes out beautifully. If it doesn't, you can always uh, cut off that portion of the paper and then raise it and put it a little bit higher. Um, honkos come blank. They don't have any marking whatsoever. So you're going to have to actually get a sharp object, maybe a carving uh, tool or maybe even a box cutter. Some people even use ballpoint pens. You're going to want to put down a nickname, maybe a kanji that you feel represents you. Uh, some people even use nice poems. I'm Kristen, thanks for watching.